Hey guys, welcome to the gym today. Coach Carp with Carp's Gym. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new budget spin bike. Maybe the, possibly the one of the best budget options you can find on Amazon. Stick with me and we're going to check it out. A bicycle. A bicycle. I just want a bicycle! Come on, take it. You hyena. Don't say thank you. Welcome back to the gym today. Now, I might be a smaller channel, but I still get offered lots of items of fitness equipment. And this right here is one of them. This company reached out to me. They had a few items they wanted an honest review on. I selected this one. This is the Drypex indoor cycling bike that you can purchase on Amazon. This one had several of the things that I was looking for in my research. And I'll go over those with you here right now. So when you're looking at a spin bike for your home gym, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. Uh, let's say these are the top three things that I would be looking for in a budget spin bike. If you want anything comparable or similar to a Peloton, one is going to be the weight of the flywheel. Number two would be the resistance. What type of resistance does it have? Magnetic or friction resistance? And number three would be the drivetrain. Is it a chain drive or a belt drive? That's why I was excited about getting this bike in. It seems to be a budget version. And for me, it checked off at least those first three boxes. The box one would be the flywheel. You want to look for a bike that has at least a 30, 30 to 42 pound flywheel because that's going to simulate your outdoor riding and make it make it a similar feel of an outdoor bike. This one does offer magnetic resistance, which in my experience is a better, stronger and quieter design. And then number three would be the drivetrain. Of the two types, the chain or the belt drive, this one is a belt drive. So this one checked all the boxes for me. So that's why I was really interested in looking at it as a budget alternative. The really only other one with similar specs that I had seen previously online that I was following and interested in was the Giroto X2. It had similar specs, but it's a lot, it's a lot more expensive bike. Oh, and some, sometimes I've seen it even double the price of this bike. Those are, those are some of the key features on the bike. It's also rated for up to 330 pounds and a user height range from 4'8 to 6'1. I'm actually 6'2 and I found it comfortable and able to use it well. I actually had one more adjustment on the seat. So I would say it's more like under 6'4", probably 6'3", 4'8", to 6'3". If you're or 6'3", or taller, I'd probably look at something else with more adjustment. But if you're well within that range, which most Americans are, I think this one will serve you well. So what else? Those are the top three. What are some other key features that you would want to know if you're looking at a bike that, that you may not think of offhand, but would help you down the road? And then the next thing that would be nice to have is make sure it has a water bottle holder. And this one does right here in the center. So when you're working out, uh, you'll be thankful that you have one, but, but if for some reason your bike, your bike is weird and doesn't have a water bottle holder, you can always get something like the Massonomics drink spotter and you can have a drink holder on any metal surface. So I recommend that any home gym. Massonomics. Does it offer a monitor? This one does have a, a smaller monitor. It's not the best monitor in the world, but it does give you some, some key features. It, ha it has a scan feature. You can toggle through total time, speed, total time, your current speed, the distance, how many calories you're burning, odometer on the bike, and a pulse rate. This one, a nice, nice key feature about this is it does have a pulse rate monitor built into the handle, which I don't see on many bikes, especially in the budget version, which is a nice add here. And then number six down on the list would be, what type of pedals does it have? Do you need clipping pedals? Or does it have a cage design, which this one does, which I actually prefer. You can swap those out for other pedals. You can get clipping pedals off of Amazon or somewhere else. You just have to swap those out with the ones that it comes with. But it does come with a cage and they work well. I used it for all my rides for at least 10 workouts. Number eight would probably be seat or saddle. Now, most of these bikes I've found in the past, even in commercial gyms, as they have been very uncomfortable, but this one actually has a nice cushion and it actually has some springs in the back that give you a little bounce. So I really do over like the seat after riding it at least 10 times and even a 23 mile ride, I did not find it uncomfortable. So it seemed, the vinyl seems to be fairly nice. It's threaded very well and it has a, quite a bit of cushion to it. Some people don't like that, but I personally like this larger back seat and a, and a cushion. Number nine would be the, the type of handles. As I said before, this, the handles do have a built-in pulse 
uh, pulse sensor so you can get your heart rate while you're riding. It has a bend, so you have this. You can get in first position, second position, and you're able to ride it that way pretty comfortably. It has a, a thin padding around the metal here, a phone and or tablet holder here. So you can put a phone or tablet here. This doesn't come with a phone or tablet, but you can put your own here. Most people have a smartphone or a tablet in their homes. You can use that here, or as I like to do it, or all my workouts, I have my phone or tablet here, and I broadcast it to the, to the large TV in front of me. So I've got a 55-inch TV in my gym, and we just broadcast it from the phone to the TV or just get on YouTube and watch it from there and do our workouts that way. And then number 10 is probably the overall adjustability. It's advertised for the rider, riders of 4'8 to 6'1. I actually think you can bump that up to about 6'3 because I ride on I ride on position number 11 and I still have one more position and I'm 6'2. So when if you stand here and you pick up your leg, you want your hip to be in line with that seat. And I still have at least one more one more room to go and I have kind of longer legs. My legs are... I have pretty long legs, so just so you know that. So it does go from position one to 12, and then it also moves front to back for adjustability. You just turn that knob here, and it does, it does, it does slide front to back there. On the handlebars, the adjustability, they just go, they just come up. They don't go front to back. So I have mine on level six, which is as high as it goes. It goes from level one to six. So here I have it on the highest position. So I'm the highest position here and next to highest position on the seat. So if you're taller or have shorter arms, that could be a factor. Uh, but if you're taller, you're probably gonna have longer arms. You shouldn't have any problem reaching, reaching the handles. Normally what I would say I recommend for a person that is new to riding is you want the seat height and the handles equal to or handles higher. So if you're very tall, it's only going to go up another inch or so so you're just not going to be very you're not going to be very far off from having the handles equal to or higher than the seat. I've got at least ten rides on this bike. Most of them, uh, seven or eight of them, were hit rides, 20, 30 minutes, high impact, going fast. I'll show you clips of that in the B-roll of me doing it and how I did it. I had one medium ride, about 10 miles or so. Went on a long ride, about 23 miles, and that was more of a moderate pace. I wasn't doing any kind of full hill sprints or anything like that. Put on, t put on a show on TV and watch the shows, watch a couple shows and get, get that done uh, in about an hour. So that's something you can do too, is a steady state or these hit workouts. I liked it for both. Like I said, I'm, I'm a good sized guy. I'm not quite, I'm not the 330 that it, that it says it's rated for, but I'm up there about 275, 280, depending on, depending on how my weight fluctuates during powerlifting season. So lean out during the summer. So that's why we brought this in because we're going to start uh, after this powerlifting meet, we're going to start doing a little bit more cardio and try to lean out for the summer. So what's the price? At the time of this video, it is online on Amazon for $199. I've seen it at $249 and also as high as $269. So at any, any one of those price points, if you can catch it at $269 and below, I would highly recommend it. I'd also like it a little better because this one is red and black, which as you can see matches my gym. It has a couple things extra, like the the heart rate monitor and things like that. If you're looking to save money, you want to get that you want to get that Peloton experience with a fraction of the cost. I would highly recommend this bike because for about two hundred dollars, somewhere in that two hundred dollar range, you can get this bike. If you want to do some of those things, like Peloton, the biggest thing about Peloton is they offer their their online service and their app, but those are subscription fees. So you would have to do the monthly subscription, or you can get the app if you have a uh, if you have another brand bike like this Drypex, I think you can get a good workout doing that. But in order to do that, you would need a Wahoo sensor, which is just a sensor you can buy on Amazon. I'll put the links for that too. And all you do is zip tie it or zip tie it around the, uh, the crankshaft or around your shoe. And that keeps up. It'll, it, can, it will sync to your Bluetooth device, your iPad or your iPhone and do it that way. Last I checked, that was about $15 a month. So that's a recurring fee. 
that's kind of the budget way to do it. Or as I did it, I did all my workouts online via YouTube. And I'll show you some of the some of the channels that I really like. The ones I found are most beneficial. They have there's pretty much a, a studio. Those are free. So I think you can definitely get a, a similar comparable workout with this bike. To step up and get the Peloton app, by all means do so. But I did it, I did it the free way, the free version. $200 to $250. I don't think you can get a better bike on the market. I love the colors of this one, like the, the, the plastic, plastic shrouds. <laughs> one thing I think I maybe forgot to mention is the magnetic resistance on this. I have at least it has 14, 14 levels of resistance. So when I'm watching it on the video and they say go to level five, I just do five turns and I'm there. If they say go to level 10, I you know, just do another five turns. That That's pretty much one full turn, give me a full level of resistance. So that's the way I would do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're looking for a budget spin bike, you want to get the workouts without paying all that huge price. Because, and as I said, the Peloton and some of those things are up to $2,500. The key differences I see here, uh, they just don't have the mounted on monitor. I mean, that's pretty much, they don't have the mounted on monitor and the online program. But like I said, the, on, the online programs, you are paying a monthly subscription for that. So you can get, you can get the solid, you can get all the bones here and do the Peloton app that way or do it this way. So hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I look forward to bringing you guys more, more content down the road. We'll have all the links down in the description. Uh, if you choose to purchase this bike, please use one of those links or any of my other affiliate links. If you see anything in any of my other videos that you would like to purchase, please, please check those links because that's how we support the channel. Thanks you guys. Have a great day and go spin. Go live. Baby.